Valentino giving me suits, gangsta. Uh, Valentino giving me suits. We are Discretion TV. Respectfully stepping in on capo status. Discretion TV. Happy Friday. Let's get it. Afini Shakur. May her soul be resting in peace despite what they hear on this vid. Pac fans are saying, if Afina Shakur pulled the Machiavelli, and if she didn't, let's start if she didn't. Why wasn't her funeral accessible to her, her fans all across the world to pay their respects? Pac fans are saying, if Athena Shakur pulled the Machiavelli and y'all had a private funeral, that's right, come on somebody. Y'all had another private funeral like how y'all did for Pac. Some of his ashes Just were threw ashes in the, the ocean. We threw all the gifts in the the wake, the funeral. Come on, somebody. Pac fans are saying enough is enough. Afina Shakur. Pac fans are saying where she lived at the ocean shore or the shoreline. She lived at the end of the shoreline where if she was to pull the Machiavelli, her boathouse, there she go, at, in the boathouse. Rest in peace, Queen. Her boathouse was at the edge where she could have did anything she want. Meaning, if she wanted to be with her son, where her house was stationed, she could have made that happen. With the type of money she had, she was a multi-millionaire. She had the funds. Just right. Pac Fades was saying when you look on the map or the when you Google Earth her location where that boathouse was, Cuba is not that far. Pac is in Cuba. That's all that's what we're trying to say. Come on, somebody. Online. I found a few vids that represented what it may seem to be a funeral or a memorial holding. A morning gathering for Afini. Um, according to Nutso, Ray Love, Big Sight, just to name a few. Castro, they were there, according to Nutso in this video. Respectfully, checking in and I'm checking out. I'm going to see you on the next one. Peace. It's a lovely day for Mama Belly, you know what I mean? We getting it in. I done pulled K Man, out the cuts. We got K in the building. Second semester. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got Edie in the house. I did good though. I got um, You know what I mean? We got Ray Love in the semester. building. Um, I gotta do the work. I'm Mac Mall in the building. Yeah, you know what I mean? Back this week, though. Big Psych just went over to the cut somewhere. He'll be back in a minute. You know what I mean? Activist, the mother of the late Tupac Shakur in Marin County. Afini Shakur Davis died last night. KTV's Alex Savage live at her home in Marin. And you also just spoke with a family friend, Alex. I did a short time ago, Garcia. Good morning to you. And that family friend, he was certainly stunned to, to hear about the death of Afini Shakur Davis. Uh, again, she died late last night here at her home in Sausalito. This is a woman who did so much uh, work in the community. Uh, her home is, uh, is one of the houseboats here. It's at the very end of this pier where we are this morning in Sausalito. And this is where the Marin County Sheriff's Department responded late last night. And it appears as though Afini Shakur Davis suffered a heart attack here at her home. The sheriff's office responded about 9.30 last night for a report of possible cardiac arrest. She was ultimately transferred to a nearby hospital where she later died at about 10.30 last night. Now, Shakur Davis was a well-known political activist in the community, a member of the Black Panthers, also a philanthropist as well. And I talked a short time ago with a family friend about all the work that she did. It's just a sad day right now, and uh, she's done a lot of work. She did a lot of work to clean Tupac's name up and to preserve his legacy. That was really important to her that, you know, that people got to see the good side of the work that he was trying to do. And, of course, that song, Dear Mama, Will Live. There where Tupac pays tribute to his mother, who struggled with poverty and addiction as she worked to raise her son. And after Tupac was shot to death 
in Las Vegas at the age of 25. His mother then oversaw his estate and then, and then again went on to become a, a political activist in the community, a philanthropist as well. And I was told by the family friend I spoke with that she had lived here, uh, kept this house here in Sausalito, this houseboat here that's at the very end of the pier for many, many years, really enjoyed this area, enjoyed the, the quiet serenity of being out on a houseboat here at the uh, at the end of this pier. Uh, and again, the corner, the coroner's office now investigating the exact cause and manner of her death last night, but it appears as though she went into cardiac arrest and then uh, died later at the hospital. Alex, Prime time. Mother, uh, Afina Shakur Davis passed away last night. Um, I want to point out that Afina was uh, a well-known and respected member of our community here in Southern Marin County, and, uh, and we share this loss this morning. What I can share with you at this point is the fact that uh, last night, just before 9.30, our Sheriff's Comm Center received a 911 phone call reporting of a woman in distress at her home here in, in, in Sausalito. Deputies and fire personnel from both Marin and Southern Marin Fire Departments responded. Uh, upon their arrival, immediately began to provide CPR uh, to Ms. Shakur. Um, she was immediately transported to a local hospital where she was treated at the hospital by uh, physicians there for approximately one hour, at which point uh, they, they determined that uh, she had in fact died from what is believed to be some type of a cardiac event. Exactly what that was is unknown at this point. Um, there's going to be further follow-up by the physicians along with our own coroner's office at the sheriff's office. But interview, whatever it is that makes us buy things, you know, has created a false illusion of, of a rift between artists and between human beings. I don't want people to think that there is in reality people are running around, we don't like people from the East Coast and we don't like people from the West Coast. I don't think that's true. And it's all up in the magazine. So we didn't have time to... Tussling every day with someone <laughs> or with some entity. I think it's... You mentioned um, September 11th. What affects me the most is the thing that happened the closest to when he died. Princess Diana was killed right after. And a huge school massacre happened at Columbine in this country. That would have affected Tupac, especially the children, the, the killing of the, the children. And that it has happened so many times and so much after that, the, the violence that we've continued to um, exert upon each other and ourselves. Um, I think that Tupac would be troubled by it, but I really feel like he would have tried to do something um, to speak to it. I'm not, I don't um, fool myself into thinking that he could solve all problems, but I, don't, I think that the music would be different because Tupac's music would speak to the huge, loss and change that those events had on all of our psyches. I think that we are all different today because of, of those events and our own experiences around it. I really feel blessed about um, the way that people accept, understand, appreciate, and love my son. I, I feel blessed by it. It's a gift and I do not take it for granted or lightly. I think that it's a gift that, meaning no disrespect to any mother, but I have this gift. Many mothers have lost their children. Not many mothers have lost their children physically and been able to have their children still before them in so many ways. I actually can hear my son's laugh almost any time I want to. Lots of mothers, you know, can't, don't have that gift. So I, I, I take it very um, specially. I understand that I have a gift that other people don't have and I appreciate it. And I respect other mothers and fathers um, who don't have that. Because death is a very funny thing. It's very um, sometimes easy for us to remember someone's eyes or, you know, even the way they made you feel. But sometimes the years can make the sound of their 
voice kind of um, disappear, become fainter. So I just feel blessed that if I want to see my son, I can see him. I can see him walking. I can see him laughing. I can hear his laugh. I can hear his silliness. I could see the, the awkwardness, you know. I could see the imperfections of my son rather than having to remember him as a mold from somewhere deep within my subconscious that there hasn't been much new evidence, there hasn't been much cooperation in solving this crime of who killed your son over the last year. I am bothered by the fact that there are thousands of young black children who have been murdered in this country and no one is trying to find the murderers of any of those children. Okay. Do you understand? It's I, systemic. I, oh yeah. I, These are systemic issues and problems. Tupac Amaro should be at least an indication that it happens throughout our community. Tupac was killed in September. In November, Yafeo was killed. In January, a woman that I know had a child, Giovanna, was murdered. Everyone, people, everybody that I know has someone in their family or in their immediate area who's been killed. And this is an issue that doesn't just have to do with finding, if, if you find tomorrow the, the killer of Tupac, mm -hmm. it will not solve these problems for all of us. And it's all of us that we have to be concerned about, okay. not just one person. And let me just say that to, for all of you, Tupac Amaru lived his life. Don't worry about Tupac. May we please? We're learning more about the death of Tupac Shakur's mother, Afina Shakur. She died last night in California, but lived part-time in Stone Mountain, where she opened an art center. And Channel 2's Audrey Washington is live inside the Tupac Shakur Center for the Arts. And Audrey, you spoke with the new owner of the property. Fred, and this performing arts center here closed a short time ago, but the owner allowed me inside to show me some of the awards and plaques bearing Shakur's name. And if you look closely, you can just see some of the impact she's made on this community. The Tubac Shakur Center for the Arts opened back in 2005 here in Stone Mountain. It was a way for Afini Shakur to honor her son's legacy and to provide art and culture to the community. Just Monday night, Afini Shakur died in Marin County in California. Sheriff's deputies say it appears Shakur went into cardiac arrest. She was 69 years old. 90 minutes ago, I spoke with the new property owner here. He got the call about Shakur's death this morning and spoke with family and friends. They're happy because they know she's in a good place. Um, but they're sad also because they lost another, another icon. Now, the new owner is working to renovate the space, how he still plans to honor Shakur's memory and her legacy with his new project. That's a part of the story that I'm working on putting together for you, beginning on new at 4 on Channel 2 Action News. Right now, though, we are live here in Stone Mountain, Audrey Washington, Channel Only 2 Action News. as Tupac's close business associate, but also as his best friend. I miss somebody that I had a lot of love for, and I miss him. Suge Knight said to me when my son died that they had an agreement that... Whoever died first, the other one would certainly take care of their families. Has Suge Knight? No. Suge Knight first signed Tupac to a recording contract when Tupac was in this New York State prison, unable to come up with the million dollars needed for bail, while his lawyers appealed a 1995 conviction for sexual assault. I don't think he had a choice, and I'm sure he didn't feel like he had a choice under the circumstances. What about this contract? This is the recording contract Tupac signed in prison, which is unusual enough, committing Tupac to do three albums for Death Row Records. This is just, it's a joke. Even more unusual, according to Richard Fishbein, the lawyer representing Tupac's estate, was that Tupac agreed to appoint as his lawyer the longtime lawyer for Suge Knight and Death Row, David Kenner, who says there's no conflict in what he did. You just have to think about the consequences of coming in to have an agreement signed with a lawyer and the lawyer walks out not only representing this side but representing both sides. Why they let me go, I don't know, but I'm out. Out on a bail, fresh out of jail, California dreaming. But at first, Tupac was grateful to be free and his mother says he wasted no time in trying to work off his debt to Suge Knight. 
he got out of prison on Thursday, and by Thursday night, he was in California in the studio. By Friday, Tupac had complete, completed, completed seven um, songs from that double album. The music hit big with sales in the millions. Tupac's mother says no one at death row would give Tupac an accounting of his money. He asked over and over and over and over again for accountings of the things that he did, of the, you know, the monies that came in and never got them. And when he screamed loud enough, I'm told, uh, they would, or someone would bring over a car and say, Tupac, here's a Rolls Royce and he'd drive it around and then when he died you found out none of it was his. Tupac's family says in the months before his death Tupac was fast catching on and preparing to break free of his reliance on death row and its lawyer, his lawyer, David Kenner. A few days before he was killed he formally sent a letter telling David Kenner that he no longer uh, can represent him and basically firing him. And in fact, Las Vegas homicide detectives took a close look at Tupac's contract and his business relationship with Suge Knight, who detectives say has refused to help the investigation. He obviously is a prime witness in this, also a victim, and we uh, have gotten no cooperation from him. Lieutenant Wayne Peterson of the Las Vegas Police Department says Knight could help break the case. The tape shows members of Tupac's entourage, including Suge Knight and members of the Blood Street Gang, kicking and punching a young Los Angeles man who is a member of the rival Crip Street Gang. He denies it. The police now consider the beating victim and two of his relatives suspects in the case. We believe we know who's responsible for this. The problem we have with this case is we don't have anyone willing to come forward and testify to it. If you knew who killed Tupac, would you tell the police? Absolutely not. I mean, because you know, I don't Why know. not? Because it's, it's not my job. I'm, I don't get paid to solve homicides. I don't get paid to tell people. The gang, gangster rap mentality that they don't want to talk to the police is definitely hurting this case. Nor has Knight been willing to talk with Afeni Shakur and her lawyer Richard Fishbein, who went to see Knight right after Tupac's death to settle Tupac's affairs. I kept telling Rick, well, we're just going to, you know, we'll meet with you. Should will take everything. Yeah, don't worry. He's going to tell you everything. We'll meet with him first, you know, but he didn't even show up. And now Tupac's mother says not only is her son's money missing, but more importantly, the master recordings of the some 200 songs he wrote and sang, potentially worth hundreds of millions of dollars. We don't know where the masters are because we can't get an accounting <laughs> from Death Row Records. You don't know where they are? We don't know where they are. Death Row Records and Suge Knight have made hundreds of millions of dollars with gangster rap and stars like Tupac Shakur. In a letter to Prime Time late today, Knight's lawyer, David Kenner, said Death Row had made numerous advances to Tupac and that all of his money had been properly accounted for and paid in a timely manner. When I was young, me and my mama had beef, 17 years old. One of the most revealing songs Tupac ever wrote was about his mother, Afeni, and her life as a Black Panther in the 70s when Tupac was born and her struggles raising him amidst poverty and crack cocaine. Given that and the death of her son, Afeni Shakur says no one in Hollywood should try to ignore her or cheat her. I simply feel that I have a responsibility to my son, who I carried in my womb, and that has nothing to do with Shug Knight or anyone. That only has to do with Afeni Shakur and Tupac Amaro Shakur. Afeni Shakur is not the only one looking for answers from Death Row Records. Primetime has learned that the FBI and two grand juries are investigating the record company and its head, Suge Knight, looking for links to drug trafficking and money laundering with L.A. street gangs and the New York Mafia. Allegations Suge Knight denies.